morning to you all. Thank you for taking time and coming for this uh, dissertation defense. My name is Rana Bishir. I am working with Dr. Jack, and I'm defending my uh, dissertation today. So essentially, for the last five years, I've been what I've been working on my dissertation is now condensed into five journal papers that I in various stage publication. So the uh, the third journal paper, which uh, where I presented one of my original techniques for localization, has already been accepted. And the fourth one, which extends that method to a higher frequency, like 2.45 gigahertz, is has a minor revision and is being re uh, resubmitted to the transactional model committee. And my second paper will on uh, a conventional localization technique and relates to the placement of receivers is actually has been revised and resubmitted. And the first one I've been this has been under review for a little over a year, and I'm still waiting to hear reports on that. And the final chapter is what I have worked on after the comprehensive exam based on this edition, and I and it's ready for submission. Now, all these uh, all these uh, demo papers grew out of uh, conference publications that I have done over this time, and um, all the four listed over there have already been published, and the last one has been submitted to the LCN, which is the new chapter. Now, this dissertation is actually organized into five chapters. In fact, I start with the first chapter, where I look into the errors that are involved in uh, estimating the radio distance or the distance between the transmitter and the receiver from signal strength. The second chapter is actually on where do I place these receivers on a workspace so that I can get a certain accuracy in locating a transmitter. And the third paper is actually where I presented my new idea, and that was applied for an RFID localization. And the fourth chapter is an extension of the third chapter where I extend it to frequencies in the range of 2.45 gigahertz. And the final chapter is where do I place these receivers when you are using my technique of cross correlation based localization? So, essentially, what is a real time <coughs> localization system? A lot of places you don't have GPS coverage, especially if you're looking at works, you know, workspace like factory floor, indoor malls, you know, things, office spaces, you don't have GPS coverage. But you need, there's a lot of service, there's a need for localization there. So, we provide an alternative techniques that using signal strength or you can use time of arrival. This is measuring the time between the transmitter and the receiver. Or you can use time difference of arrival where you uh, locate the, where you find the time difference between two receivers. Or the angle of arrival can be used to locate the transmitter. Or the method that I'm presenting, which is the signal strength based localization. So the signal strength based localization broadly is classified into two methods. One is range based method or range free method. Range based method is essentially you're trying to estimate the distance to a transmitter from multiple receivers, and you use multilateration or trilateration to find the, the position. Ideally, you rely on some free transmission equation and extra power field to use the relationship between the radial distance and the power signal measured by a receiver. The range-free method is essentially you take a map of the, the RSSI map of your area, and you store that in a file, and then when you have an unknown transmitter transmitting the signal, you try to find out using fingerprinting techniques or pattern matching to where that is actually happening in your yeah, workspace. So this is actually the top view of the lab that we conducted most of our localization experiments. This is ER-114 lab, Dr. Jack's lab. And uh, what the, fun, the first thing, yeah. how did you get this picture? I was just going to say, <laughs> how on earth did you get this picture? This is the advantage of having NSF students. Uh, <laughs> what I did basically was uh, we, we, we took camera you know, like uh, the phone cameras and took uh, pictures of it and used the, the Microsoft Panorama stitching software to stitch all the things wow. together. So uh, it, it's, it's kind of like a Google indoors, you know, <laughs> GMAP or indoors. Yeah, I... so, so one of the first things that we did was actually collect the variation of the signal strength over the lab. And what you see here is actually the heat map of the RSSI variation over this area. And what you can see that the receiver was here. And what I have done is move the transmitter along a grid for a pattern, and then try to see the measure the signal strength. And I, as you can see, there is actually a gradient of the signal strength. This is a bad area. This is a good area. As you move away from the receiver here, you know, uh, towards this location, things are really bad here. But there are points around, you know, areas that you cannot expect, you didn't really expect, but to have some really bad signal strength. I'm sorry. I don't understand this. Oh, sorry. Okay. So what you're seeing here is a heat map of the variation of the signal strength. Heat map? Heat map is, is just means that the a, a color, I'm varying the color intensity or the color to uh, represent the signal strength. So the red represents really bad signal strength, 
and the blue represents. Oh, that was the problem because usually red is high signal, blue is no signal. The no, reason yeah. the reason I represented this way is because the what the, the wireless receivers they give the signal in dBm, and they give in positive dBm. So it's minus 90 dBm is a really bad signal. So but they output the result as 90 90 as a value of 90. So this region is 90, and this is like th minus 30 dBm. So this is good region. So that I just directly plotted that on a heat map, you know, using MATLAB. So that's why this uh, plot is that way. So this is bad, this is good. Blue is good, red is bad. Okay. Red is fire, bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is a DB scale. Yes, that's right, DB scale. <clears throat> now in practical application, uh, what, what, what's your comment as far as the DB range? Is this in, in, in a real application? Or? Yeah, most of the wireless sensors, uh, receivers that I've looked into, they, plot, they provide uh, DB range only from around minus 22 dBm to around minus 92 dBm. So that's that's uh, that's not too many variation. In fact, to have a one uh, dBm change, you have to have a 25 percent change in the power between the, the the two samples. That's that's a significant amount of change. But in a lot of in a small area like this, we have seen. I will show you some plots later how the dBm changes over this. We have seen considerable change, but that change is not basically due to phase transmission model because that's a far field, you know, uh, l large uh, large wireless, wireless um, variation model. But more of the, the fact that you have a lot of multipath effects which is creating this variation. And that's what you see here, you know, areas region here, this could be because there is interference from, you know, reflection from multiple points that is really destructively adding here. You know, so that kind of variation is what I try to utilize. You don't you try to use the phase transmission, you get a gradient like this, but you cannot account for all the small minor variation that happen in between with that component. Okay. For, for all this experiment, I used a hardware, which is the commercially available uh, I5 8 or 215.4 trans receiver. So essentially, it operates at 2.45, free ISM band, and um, the, the, this is the receiver that we used, and then we had a microcontroller for all our coordination of transmission and uh, reception. And then, what I also have done is I played with the the antenna diversity. So I wanted to have better accuracy in localization. So I had to have, have two antennas with two receivers, and then their powers are combined to get the better accuracy, which I'll explain later. Now, what is the main motivation for using an RTLS, uh, sorry, the signal strength based localization? Essentially, you know, it's cheap. The signal strength information is available in pretty much any wireless device that is commercially available. So in most of the cases, it is nothing more than just a software update. And uh, that's that's where this uh, advantage of this method comes in. But what's the side effect of this thing? You don't, as I mentioned, you only have a one dBm change between sample points. So you don't get really fine-grained localization with this technique. So you have a coarse-grained localization. So, so but the, the time and angle-based methods that are currently available can provide you with a really good accuracy if you have a really good line of sight. But if you don't have a line of sight and things bounce, you know, sort of reflecting around, you get really bad accuracy. And that's where one of the advantages of signal strength things is that you can still be tolerant to a lot of non-line of sight uh, signals. So what is the main goal of my dissertation? I, I wanted to develop a method to localize a transmitter from the signal strength that I measure. And, that, and secondly, I wanted to find a method where I can place my receivers in the localization area so that I have some guarantee as to where the transmitter is. A lot of people say, okay, I have a method, but what is your guarantee accuracy? What kind of mean or median or 90th percentile accuracy do you have with your... That, those kind of guarantees is what I wanted to provide in this uh, dissertation. By transmitter, you mean the signal from RFID? Uh, RFID, yes. Uh, the, let, let's not, yeah, that's one application. The RFID is one application. But what I mean, the transmitter, for most part, is an active transmitter that is transmitting signal. RFID is just one chapter that I had to get into. So when I mean by transmitter, is an active device transmitting a signal. And the receiver is also an active device measuring the signal. So on that Boeing plant that you showed, you don't have to go back. There are these active transmitters spread all over for whatever reason. That's right. And you want to locate them. That's right. So I have this passive, not passive, sorry, the receivers placed around this workspace, and they will be monitoring these active transmitters. They will be monitoring the signals from these active transmitters. And unlike an RFID, these transmitters are sending a CW signal, or are they modulated? For, or yeah, that, that's right. These, uh, for this particular hardware, they are modulated. They are, you know, in fact, it is uh, DPSK and uh, phase shifting kind of modulation that they're using. But 
what I'm actually looking into is just the power information. I'm not really looking into the IMQ or any of those you know, individual components of the signal. So, so the, the paper is basically, my entire dissertation is organized into two sections. In fact, the first two chapters deal with a more conventional method for localization. It uses the range estimation from signal strength. The last three chapters is actually what I pro, you know, provided a new method called cross-correlation based localization. And the, 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 the third chapter is where I that, you know, that was a little bit from my you know, normal active transmitter and receivers. I go into RFID, and the fourth chapter comes back again into the active transmitters and receivers, and the fifth chapter is a place